Hey, how's it going everybody? Sean here from Zoobox, and today I want to do a little quick off-the-cuff movie review, just to kind of throw my thoughts out there. I saw this uh, new movie, The Last Voyage of the Demeter. Yes, me and 17 other people in the entire country saw this movie over the week. Well, actually, I didn't see it over the weekend. I saw it, was it last, yes, last night was Monday. I saw it Monday night in a pretty much empty theater. It was me and one other guy. <laughs> me and one other sad, lonely nerd. Um, anyways, so yeah some brief thoughts on the movie. It's directed by uh, Andre Ordahl. It stars Corey Hawkins, Liam Cunningham, David Demescalian, and Aisling Franciosi. I'm not sure how to pronounce her name. Her name is Anna in the film. She was in a movie called The Nightingale a few years ago. Anyways, so, what did I think of the movie? I thought it was okay. I thought it was an okay movie. I, I, the reason why I ended up going to see it, like what put me over the top of like, oh, well, you know, I'll spend 10 bucks support like kind of a weird little movie that I know is not going to do super well but I, I do like to kind of throw throw some dollars behind some smaller uh, interesting projects even one coming out of a studio and this is a 45 million dollar universal picture it is they didn't you know that their full weight of their marketing team and stuff was obviously not behind it it's kind of in coordinated with its budget but I don't think it was marketed very well either I mean the trailer itself was okay but I think there was a lot of confusion as to what the fuck the movie was, uh, you know, the trailer had to give away a lot, I think, just to entice people. Because culturally, we are so far removed from Bram Stoker's Dracula, kind of like the modern version of what we understand the vampire story to be, vampire lore to be, th that we have no fucking connection to that story. So if you said The Last Voyage of the Demeter... Uh, that's not going to prick anyone's ears up. Not in 2023. Maybe in the 70s, maybe in the 60s, people a little closer to the source material. But nowadays, fuck no. There's no cool kids, there's no cool teenage kids going out there and be like, Hey, oh, dude, Demeter, that's from Bram Stoker's Dracula. That's the ship Dracula sailed from Carpathia to London on. <laughs> you know? All those Bram Stoker heads out there. But yeah, they didn't do a great job marketing it. Um, I thought, yeah, I thought it was kind of weird, the marketing. The trailer, like I said, was okay. I don't even know why I'm talking. Why did I bring this up? Oh, that's why I went to go see the movie. I went to see the movie and I heard uh, some chattering about it being actually okay from people that like kind of creature feature horror movie stuff. So went there, gave it a shot. I think it's an okay movie. I think the biggest issue the movie has is it has a little bit of a lack of focus, which is weird because it's kind of a chamber piece. It's a single location film for the most part. It all takes place on the boat and in various parts of the boat. Um, but it doesn't have, it's a, a central protagonist. It kind of has a ensemble cast, all of which are great. There's a lot of great character actors in here. Clearly the movie wants you to think that Corey Hawkins' character is the protagonist, but he doesn't really become meaningfully the protagonist until maybe the last little bit of the movie. He has pretty much equal screen time with most of the other cast me members. Um, you could even maybe make the argument that the cast itself was a little too unwieldy, a little too big. There's like too many people that you need to develop meaningful kind of connections to for the things to have any impact. Um, also, it's not a slasher movie. It's a little bit of more of a slow burn, right? Like if Dracula just came out and killed everybody on the first night, it wouldn't be much of a movie. So it's kind of a slow burn and everybody coming to terms with the fact that there is some sort of supernatural element on the boat. But it's really one note in terms of uh, the kills, if you will. The way Dracula reveals himself over a few nights on the boat. Um, it doesn't really tap into, even into broader vampire stuff or even just Bram Stoker stuff like about you know uh the him being able to turn into rats or or be like the like a green emerald mist uh can manifest in those ways it, it, it really kind of just sticks to the one of him being like a bat creature the batman <laughs> what's a man bat that's what I'm thinking of you know man bat from the from batman see that five times fast jesus uh, it kind of looks like that creature. A little bit look like, um, almost like Salem's Lot type vibe. A Nosferatu type vibe, but with wings. Um, and it's a cool design, actually. It looks really cool. But it needed to kind of save that. It needed to save that for the end. And the movie, like I said, is already kind of a slow burn. 
Most of the kill stuff is very quick and in the shadows up until kind of the final act where things kind of escalate a little bit more. But you could have varied things up, I think, in more interesting ways or had the mystery reveal itself to the characters in more interesting ways. I mean, it's always, it had an uphill battle to fight because you know that it's Dracula. Like, the audience does. There's no, there's no expectation from us that we're going to be surprised by the result. And I don't think the movie adds any real twists or turns in which you would be surprised by literally anything. Um... There's, there's probably there's probably room to do it. I could see it happening. I don't want to spoil anything. Uh, but I, you, I could see a few characters shifting around, maybe mess with some motivations that could have made this a little bit more interesting. Because uh, there isn't... Like, while the cast is pretty good, and I think they have a, generally a pretty decent chemistry amongst themselves, um, they're not very interesting. Like, the characters themselves are not very interesting. And they're not given a lot of, like, life. I think the one that's probably the most memorable is uh, David Demescalian, who's been around for a, a while now. He's one of our one of our great character actors, actually. The guy kind of goes all over the place, does a lot of genre stuff. Um, you know, he's the fake Joker in The Dark Knight. I think that was, like, his first on-screen credit. And it's kind of his career just kind of took off from there. He's been in tons of stuff. So the dude I actually kind of really like. Um, he is the most memorable out of all of the cast. And that's really just more because he has a memorable presence. Like, he was able to build something in the physicality of the character and the costuming that just made him stick out. Um, not so much everybody else, unfortunately. Uh, that was not really... They didn't really register. They're very forgettable. And that's a problem. Uh, that's a problem with a movie that is this kind of small in scope. You have to have like time for like real intimate moments with these characters and and build deeper connections with with the with the audience with them. And this one just uses a lot of clichés, a lot of shortcuts to try to engender your sympathy, gain your empathy for their plights, etc. You know, beyond the fact that they're trapped on a boat with Dracula. Um, but yeah, like I you know I, I know I'm kind of dogging on it. I did enjoy the movie. I thought it was definitely worth checking out. I don't know if you want to go haul yourself to the theater to go see it, but I think once it comes out, it'll probably have a second life. It feels like a movie that's going to kind of pick up a little bit of a cult following. Um, it reminds me in a lot of ways, but just on a larger scale, there's a movie, a vampire movie, or not a vampire, I'm sorry, a werewolf movie that came out a couple of years ago called The Cursed, which a lot of horror fans really dig. It's another kind of lower budget, smaller scale slow burn kind of monster movie it reminded me of that a little bit especially aesthetically um the director i'd seen a few other things he's directed what did he do i know he did uh scary stories to tell in the dark which i think probably also had kind of similar issues in terms of like pacing uh, connection there's just something something that's hard to kind of put your finger on that's missing that's that's wrong um, oh, he also did The Autopsy of Jane Doe, which is another movie a lot of horror fans really like. Another kind of slow burn. Another kind of drab aesthetic. Oh, uh, is it Brian Cox and Emil Hirsch in that movie? I've only seen it the one time. But that movie is another one that I think is, like, okay. There's something missing. There's, like, an essential ingredient somewhere that's just missing from the whole thing. And I've never really studied his, his films enough or really thought too much of, enough about them to really put my finger on it. Like, because they're just, they're not bad, but they're also not great. They're somewhere kind of in the middle. I think Voyage of the, the Last Voyage of the Demeter is somewhere in the middle. Maybe, maybe skewed a little bit towards, like, good. Like, it's a good, it's solid. It's solid for what it is. I think if you're into the Hammer Horror movies, I think if you're into these kinds of things, I think you'll probably find something to enjoy in the movie. Um, I wish it came together a little bit better. I think the third act is fun. It has kind of a cool, kind of a kind of a cool twist. I could see, I could see them doing something with it. It's not going to happen because uh, the movie really bombed. I mean, forty-five million dollar movie, and I think it made like six point five million over the weekend, and that's that's a huge bomb for them because forty-five million production cost, but the marketing was probably another, you know, twenty, forty million. It'll probably get, make its money back in the long run, though. Like I said, I, I do think Universal should keep toying with these things and interesting ways to kind of present their their stable of, of monsters. 
I hope they keep doing it. I hope they keep investing in that kind of thing. I think, uh, what's his name? Oh, what's the guy's name, the director's name? Let me look it up real quick. Come on, computer, work. Uh, the director, Robert Eggers. His, he's going to be doing a version of Nosferatu, which I'm actually kind of looking forward to. I am looking forward to it. I think it's, is it already in production? No, I don't want production designer, dude. I want director. Nosferatu. It's in post already. All right, cool. And I, is this, a, I don't know if this is a universal release, though. Is it a Universal Pictures joint? Focus features? They, does Universal own Focus? They might. Anyways, they should keep toying with these kinds of... Uh, just kind of slightly off, maybe more kind of um, contained little weird stories involving like their stable of monsters might be interesting as a way to just put them back on the zeitgeist because whatever they're whatever whenever they try to like blow out the doors or or do whatever it just ends up being a wild miscalculation people are not don't have fealty to it they don't have the familiarity with any of this stuff like they used to so people just don't care i mean the mummy was such a weird movie like that was such a weird way to go like oh we're gonna make like an action horror tom cruise movie we're gonna make like a mission impossible kind of uh, Tom Cruise <laughs> movie with the mummy. And it just didn't play very well. It just didn't work. It was actually, it was really kind of flat too. And it's too bad because like I would have, I would have watched the movie with Russell Crowe as Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde and what Johnny Depp was supposed to be the Invisible Man, which, you know, as, as tiresome as Johnny Depp can be, I think he actually probably would have made a pretty good uh, The Invisible Man, if you, especially if you go back and read the source material and uh, or watch the old movie where he's kind of a mischievous asshole. So there's definitely a lot of potential there, but it never happened. I just don't know why they did that. Like, I just don't understand the, the point of it. I mean, well, I guess I do understand the point. It's like they're trying to be like lowest co common denominator. What's the most like baseline appealing thing we can put out on the market? What do people like to pay to go see? Well, big, dumb action movies, superhero movies were the big thing at the time, especially when that came out. So they're like, yeah, we're going to spend all this money and invest and create a connected universe and build on the models of all these other studios that they're doing with the superheroes. But we're going to do it with our monsters. And just fail, failure to launch didn't happen. So it would be cool if we saw more stuff like this. I don't know if the box office of The Last Voyage of Demeter is going to uh, make that happen. Probably not. But they should go even smaller. Go even smaller than this one. Like, do something just much more intimate. Uh, like that, the Blumhouse Universal one, The Invisible Man, I think kind of got it right because it kind of keeps the spirit of what something like The Invisible Man is supposed to be. And uh, in terms of, while it's not from his The Invisible Man's perspective, I think as an antagonist in that movie, like, that's very classic The Invisible Man type stuff. Um, I think if they kind of went more in that direction and you know, make some safer bets, basically. Get like a good, get like an interesting star to kind of ground and center the whole thing. And uh, like they did with the Invisible Man. And I think you, they'll probably, they probably do at least okay. They do at least something. They make their money back at least. You, they gotta stop spending a, a hundred million dollars on everything. Even the Voyage of the Demeter. I mean, I guess there's just too much. Although it's called The Voyage of the Demeter. Like I said, nobody knows what the fuck that is. Nobody knows what that is. I've heard, saw, I saw some people making jokes like they call, call, should have called it Dracula on a boat or Dracula boat and it would have made more money. And you know what? It probably would have. Because uh, there was the trailers. I only saw the trailer one time too. Like I, I didn't see the trailers everywhere. The poster art, like if you're familiar with like Salem's Lot and, uh, Dracula lore already, you would understand or recognize the iconography. But other than that, you'd just be like, oh, it's just some fucking dumb vampire movie. I don't know. I don't know. Those are my, that's my two cents. I don't know what they could have done to salvage it marketing-wise, but it's also it's unfortunate that it has the problems that it does because it, it's not even going to be able to really pick up traction by word of mouth because... While I did enjoy it, 
I, I enjoyed myself with my particular tastes and my affinity for kind of a hammer horror movies and stuff like that. Um, and period piece horror flicks. Like I enjoy those types of things, even when they're kind of slow. It's not going to be for everybody. It's just not, it's not a crowd pleaser. It's not a crowd pleaser and it should have been, and it could have been. I think if they had spent more time trying to actually infuse a little, a little mummy, a little of Tom Cruise is the mummy, like a little populist roller coaster ride stuff in the movie, I think it would have bowed well for it. Like it's just, I mean, hey, it is what it is. It's not varied enough. The characters are just not interesting enough. But it's got a cool vibe. It's got a cool tone and aesthetic. I enjoyed that. I enjoyed it for what it was, I suppose. But. But I can't recommend it to like a general audience. I think most normal moviegoers that aren't into this shit would be bored to tears. They'd be bored with it. It'd be a boring movie for them. But anyways, uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. And uh, we'll talk to you next time.